I'm here today because I'm addicted. You know what? I play video games better than anybody. You'd think with all my video game experience, I'd be feeling more prepared. <laughs> Hello, game fans, and welcome to another episode of the Gaming Sessions podcast. This is episode two, and this is the audio support group for gaming addicts. And with me as ever is the Hulk of a man that is the John Bibby. Welcome to the show. Hello, Ian. <laughs> Very Hulkish. Um, <laughs> and Burr, as smack. always, we're going to be talking about video games. We're going to be talking about geek culture. We're going to be talking about the industry as a whole. Uh, so consider this a fireside chat with uh, Ian and John as we discuss the whys and wherefores of the gaming industry. But the first question on all of our lips all of the time when we start this podcast is what have you been playing? So if you wouldn't mind kicking us off, John, what have you been playing this week? No problem, man. Uh, this week, uh, I have to say it's pretty similar to the last week. Uh, I've been playing Arkham Knight a whole hell of a lot. So I started off this week and I told myself, I want to finish this game this week. Let's get through it. Let's hammer it. Because uh, I was enjoying it, um, but I've, as the week's gone on, I've actually started to enjoy it a whole hell of a lot more. And now I find myself in the interesting position of, I know I'm near the end of the game. You just don't want to finish it. I'm to put off the end. Yeah, I'm trying to put it off. Uh, I love it, though. Uh, every every mission I play, it, the game's just getting better. And, I mean, the gameplay is fantastic, but I have to say the storyline in this game is what keeps me coming back. Uh, the Arkham Knight games have all been brilliant on storyline, but the storyline in this game is just immense. And I can't tell you anything because all of it is spoilers. Uh, and I know you haven't played it. I know quite a lot of the guys out there want, uh, listening haven't played it. Uh, but just play it even if you're not a superhero fan even if you're not an open world game fan just play it because this story is absolutely fantastic so you you, you owe it to yourselves to play it but um you're yeah, happy I with the combat so you're happy with all the the uh the yeah, back the com- batmobile all that kind of stuff yeah i think i actually i actually put something out on on twitter this week saying uh, i think i'm the only person in this who's actually spoken about batman who actually really enjoys the uh, the batmobile combat and the, and the tank combat um, cuz yeah it is odd you know Bat- batman as far as we know in the films and, and comics really never did have a tank but who cares it's good fun to drive and it's good fun to shoot i thought it was excellent it's, when you saw the trailer when you, the um, batmobile sort of goes upside down in the tunnel i thought it looked excellent and uh, yeah, if it breaks it's, it's up brilliant. the constant beating of thugs, then yeah, bring it on. Yeah, it does. It it, it makes it uh, you know it takes it into different areas, and uh, you know it does some some missions. I'm not gonna lie, it does get annoying. Um, but they've been been very clever with the the way the checkpoints work. You know, if there's a long tank battle, uh, it, you know you don't get to the end of it and then die right at the end and have to repeat the whole thing. It sort of puts you back in right near the end of it. So oh, that's handy. Uh, for for example, um, there's one mission, and this doesn't doesn't spoil anything, so don't worry about it. But there's one mission where you have to take out a wave of tanks, and then you have to kill the big tank at the end, which has got like four weak points on it. Uh, and I got to I took out the wave. That took me about three attempts, and then I got to do the battle with the big one, and I got to taking out three of the weak points, and then died before I got the fourth one. And I was almost throwing my controller across the room because I thought, oh god, I'm gonna have to start again and do all that again. But it doesn't. It starts you. Uh, it doesn't even just start you at the the big tank with the four weak points. It starts you've already done the three. You just have to do that one again. And I was like, oh, thank God, because otherwise I'd have you know left the game and come back later. Oh, gone are the days uh, of those retro games where they throw you back to the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not, it's not like that. But but no, the 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 storyline is, is is what keeps me coming back to this game. And I know, like I said, I said at the beginning, I know I'm I'm very close to the end now. So I've. I take myself off doing as many side missions as I can, sort of, sort of eking it out. But uh, I'll probably sit down and finish it this weekend. So I think there's going to be a big payoff at the end of the storyline. Really, really excellent, excellent. Um, so uh, how many hours yeah, do you think other, you put into thing, it so far? Oh yeah, other, oh, I don't know. Um, I'd probably say somewhere between fifteen and twenty, um, and I haven't done. At least fifty percent of the of the side missions as a help. I haven't even touched the Riddler missions because I, I tried one and it was a bit too annoying for me. Um, but yeah, I, I reckon even when I finish the storyline, so say, say it takes me another two or three hours to finish the storyline, which I can't think it'd be much more than that. I'd say there's probably at least another twenty hours worth of content in the game. 
uh, to carry on going back to was all the the VR missions and uh, everything else. So yeah, it's a game. I bought it with the with the intention of playing it for maybe a month and then trading it in, but I think now I will probably keep it for a fair while uh, and probably never even trade it in because by the time I finished everything it'd probably only be worth about two quid so it's a game that I might just keep and, and keep going back to to be honest so, really so you'd is, recommend the really download pleasantly then? surprised I'd rec- I, I, yeah I'd wish I'd, I'd actually digitally downloaded it now to be honest instead of, instead of just buying it well that's what um, I did with um, yeah, it's a game I want to keep with Destiny I just got the Destiny at first and then got it on disc Loved it so much that when it came in the sale, I just ended up buying the game as well um, and then trading the yeah. disc in because it just seemed to be one of those games that was just going to be on my machine for, for the foreseeable, really. Yeah, no, I can see it being being a game, not, not quite the same as Destiny, but I can see it being something like like a GTA V that, you know, I'd, I'd keep on the machine and keep and keep returning back to, definitely. Excellent, it's, excellent. Um, what else have you been playing uh, then? Well, uh, the other two games, well, I'll, I'll do the, the, the game I haven't been playing uh, that much before I go into the other one, because the other one's fantastic. Um, I picked up a game I've been meaning to pick up for ages on my Vita this week called uh, Oli Oli. Oh, the, the little skateboarding game. one, yeah, the little 2D one. Yeah, have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. Have you tried it? Not yet. I'm tempted <laughs> to get it on my Wii, actually. It's, it's good. I think it's very similar to actual skateboarding, as in I am terrible at it. Um, it's it's it looks great <laughs> watching somebody do it and watching the reviews look fantastic, but I am shocking at it. I can't seem to link two or three things together. But it, it I, I'm going to put some time in it. I'm going to spend persevere with it because it looks great and I do like the mechanics because the way you, it's um you you have to hold like the this is playing it on the Vita. You have to hold like the left stick down to sort of get ready, and then to pop an ollie, you have to push it round like doing a Hadouken on Street Fighter, uh, and then hold it up. So it's it's interesting moves. It's not like Tony Hawk's just pl- pressing a button to do an ollie or do a, a melon grab or something. You actually have to act it out on the control. It's a bit like skate if you've played skate. Yeah, um, that was uh, yeah, really, hard to get into, but then uh, yeah, really satisfying when you actually manage to nail those uh, tricks. That's what I think this this game's going to be like, and uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put a bit more time into it. I think. Oh well, yeah. I mean, but just in game, time for uh, Ollie Ollie Two. I think that's coming out really soon, isn't it? Oh, that, well, I think that's already out to be honest, because Ollie Ollie was in a sale. It was like ninety nine p on the on the PlayStation Store or something. Uh, so I just picked that up um, to see what it was like. But yeah, now I'll I'll definitely give the give the sequel a try. But yeah, the the other game I've I've been playing, and if you've listened to or read anything about the games using the last two weeks it seems to be the only thing that anyone's anyone's talking about and with good reason really is Rocket League on the PlayStation fantastic game the um, football game with cars or something yeah yeah it is yeah it's soccer with cars uh, three on three with the radio controlled cars and it is brilliant i don't like football games you know that about me i don't like sports games or anything like that but this is addictive it is really addictive and it makes you feel great playing it it's the perfect game if you've got you know just 15 minutes half an hour uh to jump in have a laugh especially with mates it's really good fun it's the first well it's the first football game i've played and enjoyed since sensible soccer back in the Amiga days that it's is a long time just, yeah it's just a brilliant game it's really well designed the, the cars handle like a, a house fly they're just the most best handling cars ever and you can jump and you can backflip and even you'd be playing it for a couple of minutes and then suddenly you'll find yourself jumping up flipping over and sort of basically back heeling the ball into the goal and you just feel like an absolute badass it's a fantastic game and that was free the, with the um, psn yeah yeah it was free on the psn store um and that it's apparently it's been absolutely wildly popular it's become going to become pro gamer game now the the servers keep crashing because there's too many goddamn people playing it uh, but it's such an accessible game. Even if you know you're not into sports games, you're not into car games. It doesn't matter. It's a very, very accessible game. And the one thing I loved about it, and and I've heard a few other people say the same thing, is it is like watching uh, a bunch of five year olds play football at school for the first time because it's just everyone chases the ball around. Just <laughs> it's just a big group of cars chasing the ball around. There's just and there's no one going out or trying to. 
you know, goalkeeper or go out on the wing or anything. He just yeah, go straight for the ball, straight for the ball. And the, and the physics of the ball are fantastic. It's uh, it's like playing football, one of them fly away footies you buy from a petrol station. Oh, yeah, yeah. The ones that go, toing, so toing, the, toing. It bounces yeah, all yeah, over when you the hit them. Yeah. And is there, yeah, proper... is there space to actually have people on the wing or... Um, running down, running down the sides or anything. Is there? Because you say oh, yeah, you it's going to be a pro do, yeah. game. Uh, have you talked to people? Do you talk to people over the voice chat and actually uh, organise what's happening, or has every game been a free for all? Um, I've. If you go on on your own, uh, it's pretty much a free for all. But I, I have been on and and run in a, in party chat with some of my friends, and you get a bit more tactical about it. Um, but yeah, yeah, there's plenty of space, plenty of options for it to do. But the way it's designed it is perfect because the the pitch has got uh, it's got rounded corners, so the the ball doesn't get stuck in the corner anyway. It always bounces out, and you can actually drive along. It's got walls, so you can drive along the side of the walls. You can even drive along the roof, and drop down. And oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely fantastic game. Uh, I've been playing quite a lot of it. Um, but yeah, really, really good fun. And uh, from what I've heard, it might be coming out on the Xbox as well. Uh, maybe in about six months because it's been so popular. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that if it uh, if it does show up. Highly, highly recommended. Excellent. So excellent. anyway, what have, what have you been on to? What have you been playing? Well, like you, I've got my big game. I've been playing Far Cry Four um, constantly. I think yeah, I'm excellent. about fifty percent through it, and I've put in well over ten, twelve hours or something now. So. Uh, it's just so massive. It's just the world it's itself. Huge, isn't it? Yeah, the world itself is just beautiful. Um, there's just so much going on. All of the little villages and the little caves. It's all world weathered. It's all war torn. It's just a beautiful game to actually either wander around or fly around or whatever you're going to do. So I don't think I've been playing it as quickly as I could because, as you said with Batman, it's just one of those things where you kind of want to experience it all and you don't kind of want it to end. What I did find a bit annoying is 50% through, there's not much Pagan Min, you know, the bad guy in it. Uh, Far Cry 3 had a really cool bad guy. Uh, but in yeah. Far Cry 4, this guy seems interesting. He seems like he could yeah. be a, a good a good bad guy. But at the moment, uh, he's just he's just not in it. He's just He, he speaks over the radio. He just you, lives and, on the radio, doesn't he? Yeah. Exactly. So I just kind of feel like... They're, they're missing a trick there because he's a character that they're not developing. I mean, maybe in the second half of the game, I'll see or hear more of him. But um, right now, I just think they're, just, they're not using him right now. So um, I'll be interested to know how the rest of the game develops. Which bit have you got to now? Are you mostly in the in the Himalayas yet? Or are you still sort of in the, in the jungle? Oh, no, I, yeah, there? I've done the Himalayas. I've done a fair few temples, done a fair few forts. Um, yeah. I think I have must have done about I don't know, I think nine towers. So I think I've uncovered a lot of the maps. Um, I've gone a bit feral and just tried to <laughs> ramp up all my bags and my armor and all that kind of stuff. So I've been hunting different animals, um, which was fun. Just have using you, grenades to blow to, up tigers and stuff. Um, have you learned to hate the honey badger yet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little cheeky little <laughs> creature. Which I, yeah, it's and it makes some real screamy noises as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, talking of the screaming noises, it actually reminds me of a character in one of the other games I've been playing, which is Tales from the Borderlands. Um, ah, the Telltale one, yeah. I've yeah. That, yeah. So I've done episode one, two, and pretty much all of three, because three is the latest one. And I, to be honest, I, I like Borderlands 1. Um, it was massive. Uh, Borderlands 2 was better. But I almost felt like yeah. I'd, I'd done Borderlands. I was happy with Borderlands. And I wasn't really drawn to Tales of the Borderlands at all. Um, mm. And... I don't know why I suddenly snapped, but I thought, you know what? You know, in all these like little breaks, I could just do a little bit, you know, a few minutes here, a few minutes there of Tales from the Borderlands, and I got the first one and just rinsed it. In oh, must have been two hours, and after that, I was like, okay, I'm going to buy the rest. So I ended up buying the, the rest of the season, um, and over the course of a couple of days, uh, just just really really enjoyed it. I mean, the the stories touch upon some of the characters from the. Uh, Borderlands 1 and 2. I mean, Handsome Jack's in there. I mean, that's not a spoiler because he's on the posters and stuff. Um, yeah. But it, as a story, it's fantastic. It's it's somewhere between a Western and Mad Max. It's got a few steampunk influences in there. And the story is just what makes it. I could quite easily um, sit there, just put it on the... What I found was even the best way of doing it 
was um, putting it on the big screen and just almost using the gamepad as, as in like a remote control. So you'd watch it as a movie or a TV episode, yeah. and then all of a sudden it'd say tap, 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 and so I'd tap, 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 tap. And it's almost like it feels like interactive TV is here and Telltale are actually leading that. It's just that they're using animation instead of um, real actors. And I think, I mean, Quantum Break um, was something we may talk about later, but um, it'd be nice to actually be involved in a TV show in just small little decisions and in small little bits. Yeah, making where, decisions. Yeah, and yeah. If, if the person's falling off a ledge, to actually be involved in that. So if you don't, if you don't tap fast enough, then that person falls or that, you know, then it, it changes the nature of the story. Um, because I didn't expect it at all because I loved The Walking Dead. Uh, that was fantastic, but it had a lot more game in it. This one hasn't got quite so much game in it. It's got a few different walk around parts. It's got a few swipe to avoid, but a lot of it is actually just telling the story from these two different angles. And it's really enjoyable. It's quite easy to just sit and just soak up and I think Telltale are going to really um, do really yeah. well if they can go into almost like a TV genre because it, it is like interactive TV. Yeah, well, Telltale need more things to do, to be honest. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. They, haven't got, they haven't got enough on the plate at the moment. Well, I think... I, it, <laughs> it seems to be making a game with everything. I think Game of Thrones really did a, a good idea there by actually trying to integrate one with the other. I know if I had a TV show, you'd, I think I would want Telltale to be involved. I don't know if I'd like their signature like sort of comic book style. I wonder if they mm. could do it with real actors. And I wonder if they could just film out all of those different scenarios and all those different uh, narrative paths. And then they could have the audience be involved a bit more. Because the writing is spot on. Uh, the ideas are spot on. And if they can secure those IPs, such as Game of Thrones, then there's no reason why they can't take gaming onto, onto TV as well. So... Um, so yeah, I've really enjoyed that. I've almost finished episode three. It's I've had a lot of laugh out loud moments. Um, I've been sat uh, in a lot of places. That's what I was going to say on that. Actually, is is as it got the the humour of Borderlands because that's one thing I lo- I mean I love a lot of things about the Borderlands games, but I think the humour it's there really is, is funny. Fantastic. It really is really funny. There's, I've had a few moments. Even at uh, lunchtime today, I was playing it, and then I was just laughing my head off, and people were just looking up because I had my headphones on. So I was just a crazy person <laughs> in the corner, just laughing. Um, so yeah, there's a few a few moments where you'll actually just yeah, you'll just definitely laugh. And um, where is it set in in the lore of Borderlands? Is it before Borderlands One, or is it uh, like in between one and two? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's you, you're down on Pandora. I think it's set after um, Borderlands 2 because uh, Handsome Jack's no longer with us and um, this is all stories after because there's always vaults to, to hunt. There's always going to mm. be vaults to find. And so you're a, yeah. you're, uh, I think you're called Reese. And it, it, the idea is it follows two different stories. You've got Reese and Fiona. And Reese is a company man who gets screwed over at the beginning and then he thinks he's going to be screwing over his boss by going to get this vault key. And then there's the other side yeah, yeah. where you've got this con woman called Fiona and she's trying to screw over some company guy by selling him a false vault key. And so anyway, <laughs> the stories then cross over and there's, as I say, there's the Mad Max moments, there's some racing um, in this kind of futuristic dome, there's all the different creatures that you know from the series, the skags and those crazy bat creatures. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It, it, it really pulls you back into the world and it's got a lot of really colourful characters and really well acted characters as well um, so it's, it, if you get a chance uh, uh, usually it's in a sale either on Xbox or Playstation and it's even on mobile now as well so you can play it on your phone and it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's really funny and I think it's actually pulled me back into Telltale Games because um, I'd kind of had enough of that style but I think the humour of this has really sort of brought me back into their writing so yeah I might give it a try because I, I I was kind of the same as you. I I love The Walking Dead, but I've uh, I, I know The Wolf Among Us, but I kind of be a bit a bit lost in the style. But I think a bit of humour injected in there might might bring me back to it. So yeah, I might I might give that a try. Actually, that's a good chat. Yeah, and uh, so, so yeah, uh, so, what else? Yeah, the final game that I've really been playing this week has been The Long Dark. Now I don't know if you've heard, heard of this one. Yeah, so The Long Dark oh. is from a Canadian developer called Hinderland and. It's part of the Xbox um, preview program. So they're trying to do this. Um, it's like a beta 
you can you can play a game before it's finished. And so they've got the yeah. elite, the new elite game, Elite Dangerous, and Elite Dangerous. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, and the Long Dark, and this Long Dark is the first sort of open world, first person survival, um, sort of futuristic. It's not even futuristic. Basically, uh, you are the survivor of a plane crash uh, after this geological or magnetic event. So you land in the, I'm guessing the Canadian Rockies or somewhere in the in the snowy mountains, and this event has suddenly turned everything to, to snow and cold weather. And at the moment, it's it you can't play the first the first the single player game, but you can play the sandbox game. And so you're dropped into this world, and you just got to see how long you can survive. Um, and so you've got to pl- tread through the snow. You get colder, you get colder. You got to try and uh, kill creatures, um, got to find matches, find wood, and you got to see how long you can survive. And it's 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 really interesting. The art style is is almost very painted like it's. It's very dusty. Um, I think it, it raised a lot of money on Kickstarter. And then it went into the Steam Workshop. And so it's been on Steam for about nine months. And now it's on Xbox One as kind of a tr- like a trial. So you can play the sandbox version. And yeah, you, you get attacked by wolves. You freeze to death. You pull the gloves off dead bodies and then you know, sew them yourself. You know, as, as the days progress, you've got to use sewing kits to... Um, fix your clothes and fix your sleeping bag uh, you've got to decide how to use your calories so if you're running up a hill you'll lose your calories and then all of a sudden you've got to drink a can of pop yeah. and there's not many caps, cans of pop so it's i've only lasted about yeah. five days so far but it's really good it's, it's it, it, it you feel isolated you feel alone and there's lots of things that can kill you but most of all it's the cold that can kill you so you could either stay in this dark hut and attempt to light fires, which might keep you warm for half an hour, or you could just carry on. But you just don't know what you don't know which way to go. You don't know what, which uh, if there's going to be anything out there. So the minute you step out that door, if suddenly you find yourself walking half an hour away, and then uh, a snowstorm comes in, you find yourself your calories dropping, you're freezing to death, and you panic. It's it's nice. It's nice to get that emotional response when you're playing a game. Um, and the single player, which is what I'm looking forward to the most, um, you will have a whole narrative behind it. And they've got some of the most amazing voice talent to voice some of the characters. So they've got uh, Mark Mir, who was um, in Mass Effect. So he was the... the Mass Effect, yeah. yeah so he, Shepard, wasn't he? Yeah, so he was the, so got the male Shepard. Uh, so they've got the female Shepard. They've got Jennifer Hale. So she's, she's done loads. She's yeah. done God of War. She's done Metal Gear. She's done loads of star wars things and all sorts so um she's a big name he's a big name and then they've got that, that elias Tufexis, and i love his voice ever since like the deus ex games um oh, right, he's in yeah. contrast uh, he's done splinter cell he's in loads of the assassin creeds so they've got some real top-notch voice talent as well so i'm hoping the single player is going to be awesome I was going to say, does the does the single player have an end game? You know, do do you get out, or is it just a, a constant? You are lost in the wilderness to see how long you last type thing. Well, I hope so. I mean, I think there must be like checkpoints and villages and pockets of humanity that that are still alive. I don't know if it's because you were in an aeroplane that you um, weren't affected as much by this geological event as everybody else, but I I think yeah. that. To have all of these voice talents in must mean that they're going to have a quite a big role. I don't think it's going to be a you meet this guy, he says go here. I think they're going to be involved. So I think you're going to meet people, you're going to be walking around with them. They may hinder you, they may die on the way, all this kind of stuff. So uh, it's very much a, a, a huge sandbox game that m- many things could happen. So I'm assuming that the single player is, because it's been in develop- development for so long, that they're going to try and make it like as big as say Rust or or as is it the H one Z one or something like that. So it's going H1, to have this Z1, survival yeah, yeah. aspect, but then also have pockets of stories that you can you can be involved in. It's, it sounds interesting. It sounds like um, have you seen that game but, uh, that's coming out by, from uh, is it Campo, Campo Santo, the Firewatch game that they showed out at E three? Um, Do you see that one? No, no. Or what's that? Just, it uh, looked fantastic. Uh, I'm really looking forward to playing it. It's you're basically in. I think it's set in sort of Wyoming in America, and it's uh, got a really interesting sort of art style to it. 
where they've got these fire watch towers in the in the wilderness and it's just you and you've got a radio and the person you're speaking to oh, yeah. is back at base and you're I think I think you're solving a murder or something like that and uh, it's all done in a first person view but it's it's very similar from what you from what you were saying about the long dark it's just that it's you know you're out in the middle of nowhere huge stretches of land and you've got to you know decide what you're going to do with your with your supplies but um I want I want go too much onto it because I'm probably going to talk about it more when, when the game actually comes out but it'd be worth checking out just have a look at the, the trailer for that uh, yeah Fire, definitely I'm sure it's called Firewatch look really interesting yeah well um, yeah and talking about end games as well um, did I tell you I, I finally finished her story because you finished it 100% yeah. finished it yeah because I didn't know if there was no. an end game because I just was watching the videos I was taking it all in I was loving every minute of it and then I hit the end game and it, it was excellent. It just it blew my mind and it was just such <laughs> a brilliant finish um, to a, a really unusual game. Um, I then decided to write a review. So on gamingdebug.com you can see that I've got a review online there. I don't usually review uh, mobile games for Gaming Debugged. I usually leave that for App Trawler, which is where I, I post things like my uh, Fallout Shelter review. Um, but I loved it so much. I thought I've got to got to put this out there. I went to the different YouTube channels and I I started commenting on things and got involved with the whole backstory and everyone's <laughs> conspiracy theories and all these different theories. So I got involved and I thought it was really good. So it was well worth a review. But now that's done. Um, I just I think it, it's worth it, especially if you've got a train journey or something. If you've got three or four hours to kill um, and you've got a battery pack to go with your phone, it's definitely worth. <laughs> playing and, and running through well that's it after we, we spoke about it last week on the podcast i've actually downloaded it i've got it sat there on my phone and i'm waiting for my next long train or plane journey and i will sit and sit down and, and play it i think yeah I definitely worth do it. it in one session oh yeah and um have a spare battery pack because it will rinse your battery <laughs> honestly you just just watching a video for two hours it'll just um it'll kill it but um really worth it really worth it so yeah, that's what I've been playing. That's what I've been playing. It's been a real variant. Yeah. I've been future, I've been snow, and then I've been up in the uh, the the mountains. So a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, should we move on to uh, news to see what's going on in the world? Let's do some news, sir. News from the underground. I'm Rick Hamlin for GNN News. So um, okay, so it's summertime, and which means that it's not only um, summer games for Xbox, but summer games for PlayStation as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, for, for my side of the story, the old Xbox, uh, Summer Spotlight has has begun. Uh, it's got a trailer, it's got an advert, and there's been no real official um, list. But I was watching the advert for the Summer Spotlight of all the games, and then I was, I was pausing it moment after moment after moment to try and get <laughs> the details of all these different um, covers that were flying up in the advert. So, the ones that I have got down are World of Tanks, King's Quest, Smite, Toy Story's uh, War Chest, which we've already discussed. But then there's a, a slew of other games. So you've got The Bridge, Bridge Constructor. Mm, sounds interesting. Mm. Um, Don't <laughs> Starve, uh, I think it's Giant's Edition. There's uh, Squid Hero for Connect. I get all the Connect games. I don't know why. I think mainly for the children. Uh, the Swindle, yeah. uh, Extreme Exorcism, uh, Blues and Bullets, Submerged, Binding of Isaacs. Uh, Super Mega Baseball, Panarium, Commander Cherry, Whispering Willows, and Octodad. I'd say of all of them, I don't know many of them titles, but I want to play Super Mega Baseball. That sounds pretty amazing. I hope it's robots hitting baseball bats. That sounds fantastic. Well, it's definitely like got a big-headed character on the cover, so it's, it's cartoon style. But the ones that I think you should <laughs> uh, most look out for is uh, Submerged. Because this was a real surprise at E3 in the indie stage. And so yeah. it's the developers who had contributed to things like Bioshock and XCOM and Fallout Tactics. And that it's, it's described as a combat-free experience where the world okay. has been submerged. And so you go from, you go on your boat uh, from building to building and island to island to, to find things to save your dying brother. And the aesthetic look, looks lovely, graphics look beautiful, um, and it just looks like a really sort of sweet, serene, relaxing game, even though, you know, you're trying to, to help your brother. So that's yeah. definitely one to look out for. 
The other one was the Swindle. Now this one is a 2D side-scrolling, kind of a, I suppose you'd call it like a thief simulator. So you've, you've got to go into houses, you've got to um, earn enough money to have upgrades in order to, to rob other houses. And it's all kind of done in a, how would you describe it? Kind of a, I don't know, Odd World meets Limbo or something like that. So it's kind of, it's, it's okay. got a, it's got a kind of dark, golden aesthetic. So everything looks uh, a little bit weather worn. Everything looks a little bit um, almost steampunky. And you play a number of sort of nineteen twenties gentlemen who go into different buildings and steal di- giant diamonds and jewels. Um, and yeah, it just it looks like a lot of fun. It looks a bit different. And then the other ones, if you've got Steam, then you'll probably have played them already. Don't Starve is excellent. Yeah. Uh, Octodad is funny, just for the floppy limbs. Interesting but, mechanics with Octodad, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, I quite enjoy that. And Binding of Isaac, that's a, that's a good one as well. So loads of things coming this summer. And so this has started, I think it's uh, today or yesterday. And then I think PS4 do something similar. But... Yeah, the PS4, um, they've got the games announced for the uh, the summer sale but i'd be honest with you i haven't actually had a good look at them yet because i think it's different from america to europe and i'm pretty sure they've only announced the american ones so far uh but they have announced today the ps plus games for august and this is definitely the the european ones uh and we're getting uh lara croft and the temple of osiris which is the sort of top down 3d um laura croft not it's and it's old school laura croft uh before the remake so it's um a bit yeah, of a hot uh, pants yeah with a, with a hot pants and the two guns and and no real story in there. there's a little bit of a story but um the game's more made for co-op than anything else it's a really good fun sort of action action puzzler um that's for the ps4 then you've got uh limbo also for the ps4 i think most people have probably tried that by now but if you haven't definitely definitely give it a go uh then we've got god of war ascension uh on the ps3 which is possibly the weakest of, of the god of war series but still worth picking up for free um it's still worth giving it a try um and stealth 2 for which is the cross play one for ps4 ps3 and vita uh i'll be picking this up personally for my vita because I've, I've actually not played it before on the other ones i've read a lot about it and i know it's supposed to be a fantastic game so i will be picking that one up and then two games i don't know a whole hell of a lot about called sound shapes and castle storm complete edition um, i read a bit of it, a bit about them before apparently sound shapes is a, quite an interesting puzzler and Castle Storm is worth a go, so I will be downloading that. I'll probably talk about those two next week on next week on the podcast. Yeah, excellent. But, and uh, you got loads of um, cheap games as well. I saw that loads of the Dragon Age stuff was on cheap as well. I think it was thirty pounds or, or less, I think, for the Dragon Age Inquisition. Yeah, quite a lot of stuff has got has gone in. Not on the the summer sale, like I say, is, uh, by the time you listen to this, it'll probably all be out there. But I don't think it's actually been fully announced yet. But there's quite a lot of deals flowing around at the moment. I've been uh, been tempted by quite a, quite a few things currently. Yeah, Alien Isolation. I saw. I heard that was going to be about fifteen pounds. Um, I, so it's like ninety or twenty dollars. Alien Isolation could be ninety nine p. I would not play it because <laughs> I would be scared out of my skin. <laughs> you would be. You really would I, be. I, 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 I would. Be, I. I am. A, for the everyone out there, I'm a massive wuss. There's <laughs> lots of games out there I would love to play, but I. I mean, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. I'm sure it's a fantastic game, but I will never play it in my life because <laughs> it looks terrifying. Oh, I mean, it's a shame but, because I'm, you love the Alien franchise, though. Alien Isolation is. I love so the Alien good. franchise. It's such, yeah. a, it's such a good game. Um, <laughs> it's not one that you'll enjoy when you play it, but it's one that you'll look back on and go, "Oh wow, that had me." in knots of tension because it was just so scary but now i've now i've played it and done it i can look back and go yes that was awesome that rocked my world but at the time i was i was just sweating going why am i doing this why am i playing this game (laughs) um it just felt like i was in this constant state of just constant tension just annoyed with the game because it was so scary i even played it with the sound off for a little bit just so I could run through a few areas without being interrupted by all of the creaks and crunches and screams that I was hearing. So, 
Yeah, but it's, it's great. Now, in hindsight, it's a great game. Now, give me a good Aliens Colonial Marines game, and I'll and I'll come back to Aliens games. Mm-hmm. You know, the the last one with Sega and Gearbox. I know it's been in the news recently, but that was I I did buy it, <laughs> hoping the reviews were all wrong, but no, nope, they were all right. That was a shocking game. So uh, yeah, give me give me another one like that, and I'll be back in there. But give me a survival horror one. I'm sorry, I'm out. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you another. Out. Another game that I actually played this week that was not on console, which was not on PC, and was not on a handheld. And it wasn't even a board game. You've been playing board games? <laughs> no, no, I haven't even delved into board games. The game I've been playing recently <laughs> is a Star Wars game. Star Wars Battle Pod. Right. You, 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 the, the arcade one? Yeah. Where did, you, where did you find that? Yeah, it was down at the uh, down at the pier. I was in there and I saw that they had the Star Wars Battle Pod <laughs> and I thought, I'm going on this. Oh so yeah, I, I dropped a few pounds and it was really good. I actually felt a little bit dizzy um, playing it because the screen goes all, all around you. It's a bit like a mini IMAX in that it curls around wow. you. So you're always, you can always see what's going on. Um, and so you sit in a big chair. It looks very um, like TIE Fighter. It looks like a TIE Fighter, I suppose, or looks like you're in the cockpit of an X-Wing. And you have three different choices. You can play either the battle uh, of the x-wings where you're going in the death star you can play the battle of hoth and i think there's a a later one where you can play um the final battle as well out in space but it was fun the graphics were superb the sound was awesome and playing it did make me feel a little bit dizzy because the screen went all the way around you it was a lot of fun it was very fast My, my only criticism was i paid two pounds to play it and this was just for one of the levels. And I did the trench run. I did the whole game. And it was it was brilliant. And I, I, I beat it. I was like, yay, excellent. I've done the whole trench run. And it graded me. It gave me scores. It put me on a scoreboard. And it was just like, that's it. Put more money in to carry on. And I was like, but, but I didn't die. I didn't die. Why are you doing this? <laughs> and so it was it was two pound to go. So I only had two goes. I had to go on the Hoth level, which was excellent. And it was the same thing. You can pretty much get all the way to the end of the battle. And then it just asked for more money. Um, so there's no real challenge in, apart from the fact that you, you want to go up the scoreboards. How long did it take you? How long did it take you to do the, the trench run, for example? It was probably probably about four to five minutes. Um, so you got a okay. good five-minute play out of it. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. Um, so what I might do is, next time I go down there, I might just take the camera and just stick it in the pod with me, because you're, in this, you're yeah. in this whole massive... Uh, surrounding pod with uh, a door on it so you can literally close yourself in and you know, keep playing these these games. That was nice, but there's a few different uh, new games down at the arcade, so I might try a few of them as well. I'm heading down to uh, to Blackpool at the weekend to visit a few people, so I, uh, I might nip off for an hour and go down to South Pier and see what I can find down there because I've been dying to give that a go. That looks a fantastic game. Yeah, there's that. There's, um, there's a few Terminator games and Mario Kart is all like a connected eight-person racing game, so you can play Mario Kart in on in, in arcades format, which is quite fun. Um, there we go. I might give that a try. So, yeah, so anyway, back to news. What going on in the news? <laughs> yeah, sorry, it was a slight, uh, de- <laughs> slight detour there. Arcade section. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, also in news, um, Minecraft has a new edition, new skin. They've got the Greek mythology, m- Greek mythology edition. So this yeah. is a new skin for Minecraft. For those that are interested, they they might love this. I've already got the uh, Mass Effect skin and the Doctor Who skin, so I don't really need anything else now. I'm quite happy with what I what I have. But for those interested in history, then the Greek mythology edition skin is just for you. Which is pretty much everyone that's into Minecraft will buy anything that they really surely. Possibly, but it'd be good for <laughs> teachers and good for people who are trying to use the minecraft as a learning tool i think that would be a really yeah. good way of using this this new pack because then if you're trying to say well let's let's see how the romans did this let's see how the greeks did this and let's build an amphitheater i think it would be you could almost pass it off as a lesson you know let's let's play this game and we'll do it with the greek style and yeah that can be the lesson for today I'd get a lot of points if that was my teacher yeah definitely but uh, I think the the other things that have come out this week that have, that have caught my interest was, um, do you see the stuff with um, Terminator being added to WWE? 
after they had to remove Hulk Hogan. Yeah, yeah. So he has had a bad couple of weeks, really. Um, yeah, it makes you wonder whether this was something they were planning on releasing, announcing now, or was going to be closer to release date, or maybe even DLC. But they just thought, oh, shit, we have to do it. We have to do something now. I, I don't know what he said. All I know is Hulk Hogan said something racist about The Rock. I haven't looked into it much further than that. But whatever he said, it's had him removed from everything, hasn't it? The, yeah. Everything the WWE do. Well, I think he had so, a um, an issue with the website Gawker. Um, and I think he, there, was a, there was some issue where they, I think they put out his sex tape or something like that. So he had, he had, <laughs> he had racial inc- incidents. He had um, sex yeah. tape incidents and all sorts. So... He was getting it from all sides. Um, I think I was, I was reading one uh, news article um, about Hulk Hogan, and it was about this. Uh, they managed to subdue this tape for a certain amount of time, uh, and they talked about how he cheated on his wife with his best friend's best best friend's wife. And oh, right. what was? I'm just trying to think. Just, let me just bring up the story because out of all of this, this is what caught my eye the most. And that was the husband of the wife that he had cheated on. He had officially changed his name to the Love Sponge. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, where is it? So Hulk brazenly blustered uh, to Heather Chem, uh, the wife of his former pal Bubba, the Love Sponge, uh, whom he and he had actually officially changed his name to the Love Sponge. Um, the, that was awesome. That sounds like a cocktail you drink in Ibiza. <laughs> <laughs> so he had his racism thing, he had his um, uh, sex tape thing, and so yeah, he's been removed. And I think to, to sort of fan the flames of all of this bad publicity, I think this Terminator thing uh, is helping calm people down. And it looks great, it's a great idea, it's awesome. It's a cracking idea. I, I think it's quite funny that they, they've got Terminator in WWE, they got Predator in in Mortal Kombat. You know they're, they're bringing all these people. But it's how long till you know RoboCop shows up in Killer Instinct or something like that? You know, well, yeah. he was already in Streets of Rage years ago. So, you know, they're they're gonna. I think it's it's a good idea bringing these sort of people back. I I I haven't bought a WWE game in years, but I could be half tempted with with playing that one. Playing as a Terminator it sounds fun to me. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that was that was a good pre-order bonus. I don't really agree with pre-order bonuses, but hopefully it'll just be released as a as a DLC pack later on. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it will. Um, yeah, so what else has been happening? Um, the Street Fighter Five beta was cancelled indefinitely after about three days, so that was just going I, I think horribly it's wrong. Back up now, I think. I could be wrong. I'm sure I saw something on Twitter before saying it's back up. No, oh, that'd be good because so, they, don't, they don't, don't quote me on that. They took it down after three days because they said um, they had uh, all sorts of issues with it. They just discovered so many bugs that they just pulled it and said we're just going to take it back and wait for it to be to be ready. But if they've uh, if they fixed it, that's excellent. Yeah, I'll have a look now. Hang on, I don't want to be giving people false truths out there. Okay. Um, all right. So whilst you're looking at that, um, fragments of him was announced as well. So. This is another one for, for Xbox, um, and it's probably PS4 as well. And it's it really reminds me of The Novelist. It's a very much a very stylized, okay. musical, ethereal indie game uh, that, has to, that deals with the death of a person. So it definitely reminded me of The Novelist. I don't know if you ever played it, but it's, it's a fantastic game. I've not played it, but I've heard quite a bit about it, but I've not actually played it. Yeah, you you play this ghost in a house um, whilst this novelist writes this book and it, with his family. And what you can do is you can you can affect the lives of these people because you can go you jump from light bulb to light bulb, and you can almost come down into the room. And if they see you, then you, it's almost like game over. But you can go into their memories and you can go into their thoughts and you can help influence their decisions. So the little boy is all sad because he's not, the dad's not spending any time with him. And so you can almost sort of go into the dad and sort of say, right, okay, well, you can either get another chapter of your book done and then make the wife and the publisher happy, or you could spend some time with your son and you have these moments where you have to make that decision for them. And then you see the outcome and you see, well, you know, he, he's now closer with his son 
but the publisher is saying, look, you know, you're missing deadlines. You know, this, you, you're going to lose this job. You're going to lose your house. Uh, and it, it's a really fascinating game as you sort of fly from light bulb to light bulb. And this fragments of him sort of reeks of this. And I'm not, I'm not, I don't think it's the same publisher. I think it's definitely somebody who's been influenced by it because it, it follows the, the story of these four people who are affected by the death of this one person. And I think right. you, I think again, you have this ethereal form where you get to see how these four lives react, and you get to influence them and how how they deal with the with death. It sounds it sounds morbid, but if it's anything like a novelist, it'll be really good. It it sounds like you say it sounds morbid, but if it's handled correctly, it could be a really really good game. It could be really sort of not enjoyable is probably the wrong word, but you know an, an experience to play. I do love yeah, I sounds... do love a good experience, and the novelist was good in the fact that you could flicker light bulbs and get people to pull away if you wanted to influence somebody. You just flicker a light bulb somewhere and then fly from place to place. Yeah, as if it's handled as well as that was, then it could be a good game. Otherwise, it could just be a cheap rip off, but. Hopefully, it's uh, as good as a novelist. Okay, quick news update on Street Fighter. Uh, apparently, it was back up, but now it's back down again. <laughs> so, uh, and currently, it is still down. But they're trying to reset the servers. Is what I've just uh, just quickly discovered. So, uh, sorry if I got everyone excited there, but this will you won't be listening to this for a couple of days anyway. <laughs> and then it's, it'll only uh, be ten people, so we're okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. I don't think they're interested in Street Fighter anyway. But um, uh, other interesting news that I'm sure the uh, uh, Pete, the uh, Nintendo fanboy in yourself, was uh, the first sort of official announcement of a game being released on the Nintendo NX. Yeah, this is not a hundred percent, but kind of official announcement of Dra- was it Dragon's Quest ten and eleven. They they were saying they were bringing out on it. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Um, the sort of the later Dragon's Quest games looked really good in the terms of the, the, the third person the ones on the dx were were sort of top down but if yeah. they could if they could make it as good as some of the uh the final fantasies then that'd be fantastic i think what what was interesting i, I was reading about it is dragon's quest 11 runs on the unreal engine uh which means that whatever you know the nx is being powered by must be able to run high level unreal engine stuff so you know they're they're not doing the usual nintendo thing and sort of stepping back on the power they might be actually ramping it up for this one so yeah i think it's uh, um, interesting trying to get those third party developers involved i think something that killed the wii u was it was the the first party games were excellent but there was just nobody else making games for it yeah yeah, it was just a Nintendo only console, really, wasn't it? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, I'm excited about the NX. I'm hoping it'll be uh, it'll be something cool. I'm hoping it'll bring Nintendo back. To be honest, that'd be quite cool. Uh, a few other things I've just announced, I've seen to just to sort of wrap up the the news section. Uh, the guys behind Titanfall might be making a free to play Titanfall. It was announced today. Um, don't know much more about that. Uh, literally just wrote a very short news new story about it, so um, that would be that would be interesting. I don't know if it's coming to uh, multi platform or what. Um, also, yesterday Mafia Three was officially announced, and we're going to be hearing more at Gamescom. I'm personally looking forward to that. I uh, played quite a bit of Mafia Two, cracking game. Uh, so uh, looking forward to hearing uh, hearing some more about that. So that's the one by uh, um, is that two two K. Uh yes, I think it was two K. I, I honestly I yeah. couldn't tell you hundred. I think two K. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's uh well the developer I think was Hangar Thirteen, but I think the publisher yeah. is two K. I think. Yeah, I think it was published by two K. But yeah, crack cracking game after you two. Um, really really good game. So again, good story, good story to it, good gameplay. Yeah, we've uh, seen a few so, yeah, more things really uh, appear from Gamescom now. So, uh, they definitely said there's yeah, going to be um some gameplay for Crackdown going to be the mafia 3 um launch i think on the on a youtube channel they said i think yep. on the 5th and so we're going to see a little bit more i think even the microsoft xbox youtube channel is saying get ready for some I big s- announcements yeah i saw that today actually i think i think that, as we said last week i think microsoft are really going to go go harder sony sony you're not going to be there in any any large form um they're going to have a small stand i think on on the show floor but that's mostly going to be for destiny um so yeah they're uh i think microsoft are gonna go gonna go big or go home and i think they're gonna go pretty big 
Yeah, so, no, I think they've uh, killed it this year. Absolutely, I think if uh, if we're talking console wars, I think um, Microsoft yeah. really stepped up. Um, no, the... I think they have. And it's I'm, I'm quite excited about the fact that it's actually going to be a, 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 a viewable time for us. It's at sort of three o'clock in the afternoon. I think the 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 broadcast is from from Germany. So uh, so yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. Yeah, and I think they'll probably um, say a lot more about the Windows Ten integration as well because the, I think Windows 10 came out today um, and so that's yes. got a lot of Microsoft um, integration and streaming and all that kind of stuff so I think they're going to use that as a platform to sort of talk about Windows 10 as a as a, a gaming addition. I, I have to admit I've kind of missed out on all this Windows 10 stuff being a being a Mac user. Uh, yeah me too. <laughs> I've seen it, seen it around there I'm sure it's great I'm sure it's fantastic but it kind of be seems to be doing what what Apple's been doing for a while, you know, giving out free free updates and things. But this is this they're saying that this is around for forever now, so it'll be interesting to see what it does. It will be interesting to see what it does, yeah, and especially no, with integration with the Xbox. I think Microsoft have seen that the PC gaming market is such a big market that I think they want to take more steps to bring one to the other. Um, so if they mm. can make e- Xbox not just a console but like an experience and there's no reason why they they can't bring a kind of a steam esque type um interface to pcs um yeah no, so, no, i think that'd be great yeah so i love if my it steam works account. it'd be fantastic <laughs> yeah okay cool um so that's that's rolling out today uh we think we tried to install on a mac today but, uh, sorry we tried to install uh, windows on a new laptop today but um You've got to wait. So there's been the preview people, and then there's you've got to wait for it, your download slot or whatever. So I think a lot of people are trying to get on board today, uh, but we didn't get uh, opportunity to get on today. Yeah, how many millions of PCs across the world are trying to download it currently? <laughs> yeah, it's actually just looking on Twitter. There's quite a lot of people talking about it right now, trying to, uh, trying to download it. So uh, maybe leave it a couple of days. So, from the new Microsoft to the ancient and old Amiga, did you hear that it was the 30-year <laughs> anniversary or the 30th I birthday did. of Amiga this week? So, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, it made me feel quite, uh, quite uh, uh, old, to be honest. For anyone it's, that cares, uh, I would definitely say go over to GamingDebug.com, uh, check out the 90s week. I had a 90s week of just uh, pure 90s content, and there's a lot of Amiga stuff in there. Um, so I, I look back at some of the best games for Amiga and all that kind of stuff. Um, so what were some of your favourite games on, on the Amiga back in the day? Well, I have to say, I actually didn't own an Amiga. I owned an ST, but to be honest, most of the games were the same anyway. Exactly, yeah, uh, they were the same. But uh, I have to say, my, my favourite game, uh, what, what, my favorite, one of my favourite games was New Zealand Story. Oh yes, days. That remember the little Kiwi game. firing arrows and things the, from the Rainbow Islands guys. Yeah, yeah, and just Fantastic going for all game. of those little whirlwinds, uh, and so if yeah. you shot your arrows in just the right place, then it would create the the warp gate to the next level and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic, a brilliant game, really well thought out, uh, fantastic playability. Ah, oh, this brilliant game. And then uh, t- two games from uh, Bitnap Brothers, uh, Xenon 2, uh, for its gameplay and for its soundtrack, like from Bond the Bass, that was fantastic. Uh, and Speedball 2, still a game I love today, I play yeah. quite regularly on my phone. They, was, they are such a great studio, such a great studio. I mean, do you also remember the Chaos Engine as well? Yeah, right. oh god, yeah, the Steampunk one, yeah, yeah. that was a fantastic game. Yeah, there were so. so many good games around then. I mean, I I was thinking the other day about um, things like James Pond was a cracking game, and the blue, there was a Blues Brothers game that came out around that. Yeah, time, that was excellent, was fantastic as well. Yeah, Super Frog uh, was a good the, one. Um, yeah, there was just there was just so many. I I was trying to remember just sort of flicking through my 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 floppy disk box of what what titles that used to used to flow up to me. But um, what I mentioned last week, of course, uh, Cannon Fodder. Cannon Fodder was one of my favourite games from back back in those days as well. Yeah, um, and of course it was the birthplace of uh, Monkey Island as well. So I, I, yes, Monkey Island one yeah. and two were just amazing. Yeah, fantastic games. Absolutely, there was there was so many good games from that period, and those games, a lot of them that we that we remember now, were you know made in people's back bedrooms, pretty much. You know, they they were nothing massive. Uh, I mean, I was chatting to someone the other day. I think it was Commodore sixty four game actually, but uh, Way of the Exploding Fist. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Like that. 
fantastic sort of you know precursors to a lot of the fighting games and stuff we see now but uh absolutely excellent games yeah. i love the amiga and actually talking about the amiga i don't know if you saw this today uh the, the today sorry this week um commodore have released a smartphone did you see this no uh yeah commodore actual commodore the company have released a smartphone i can't remember the, oh yes i can it's called the commodore pet um and it runs a, a Commodore Amiga and Commodore sixty four emulator on it. Uh, Very nice. It's uh, I, I was I was trying to read, read a read a small news story about it. I think it's three hundred dollars, but randomly it's the only place it's released are places like um, Poland, Czechoslovakia, and Hungary or something like that so far. But it is getting a, a worldwide release. Uh, and that'll be out, I think, uh, near the tail end of this year. I think it comes out in sort of two versions. Um, it's got a, a, a 64 gig version, 128 gig version. But yeah, keep an eye out for that, the uh, the Commodore Pet. Yeah, excellent. Sounds like a bit of retro retro goodness yeah, there. Be, be quite cool. Unfortunately, excellent. the only thing about it, it actually is sleek and quite styled in a modern style. I thought it'd be a, a beige brick, but but no, it looks quite cool. Yeah, that would be nice if it was a rounded beige brick as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. um, all right, so my um, last bit of news, because we're coming up to the hour anyway, so we're going to have to start wrapping up pretty soon. But um, yep. my last bit of news was just general Xbox games with gold. Um, in order to get everybody warmed up for Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain, uh, we're getting the Ground Zeroes for free dr- during August, which could be very cool, because I never played Crap that because I wanted, to, I wanted to wait for the main game, but... As I'm getting it for free, I'll play it anyway. Sounds good. Yeah, look at look at it like a demo. To be honest, I mean, I got the the original game and for I paid whatever it was on release twenty five quid, which is way too much because I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can <laughs> you can either do it in about ten minutes or do it in two hours. However, you want to play it. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, Treat it like a demo for the Phantom Pain. To be honest, is the best way of looking at that. Yeah, I look forward to that. And then we're also getting How to Survive Storm Warning Edition, which is a sort of a top down. Um, I think it's like half zombie shooter, half um, sort of survival game as well. So um, it'll do the job. It's a free game, so can't complain. That's coming in the uh, 16th of August. So even if you don't really want it, just set it to download, and that means it'll just be in your library. That'd be nice. Cool. Okay, and so now we are coming up to the hour. Shall we? Shall we wrap up and go to the outside world? See what is happening outside yeah, of the world of. Gaming addicts and else that's going on. 2D screens. So what what else have you been doing outside of gaming? Um, to be honest, this week um, I'm actually uh, I'm actually going to do it tomorrow, and I'm a bit behind the curve, but I'm going to go see Ant Man, which I've been really looking forward to. I've just been trying to find time to go and see it. Um, I'm a massive Marvel nerd. Uh, I love DC, but um, I'm much more of a Marvel guy really looking forward to Ant-Man uh, I've heard a lot, lot of stuff about it and next week I'm sure I'll, I'll talk talk more about it but the, the main sort of, uh, uh, sort of comic book and Marvel news that's got me excited this week is they've finally announced that the Jessica Jones Netflix show is going to be on this year uh, did, I don't know, did you watch um, uh, Daredevil Ian? Yes, yeah on, on Netflix? Yeah, yeah the fight scenes yes. were excellent, I think it was a really oh, sort of slow going to begin with but when they actually fought, you really felt the, every punch. You know, he really just oh, fought people it. until people were on the ground. Yeah, I loved it. I thought it was one of the best things Marvel have done. Uh, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. So, I mean, it, it's one of the things I said, oh, maybe I'll watch an episode a week. And I watched all I think 12 episodes in about a day. Um, I just loved it. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing what else they do. Because obviously, they're bringing out. Jessica Jones, and then next is Luke Cage, and then Iron Fist, and then they're going to do the Defenders sort of mini movie, which is oh, it's just going to be brilliant. But yeah, no, really, really looking forward to that this week. Um, there's not been that much news uh, sort of coming out. I mean, there's been a bit, a bit of stuff from the uh, the all female like uh, Ghostbusters remake. Uh, uh, Dan Aykroyd leaked the facts, uh, which I think he's probably got into quite a bit of trouble with. Leaked the fact that he's got a cameo in it on Twitter, which. Um, Got taken down straight away, but obviously it was already out there. So obviously, uh, he's going to be doing a cameo in the in the new Ghostbusters movie. Ah, oh, right, okay. Because um, I know I've, I've seen the new Ecto Mobile, I've seen the new costumes, um, yeah. and then I've seen them in the costumes as well. 
I don't know what their character names are yet, but um, oh, they released that as well. But the I can't remember, what it, but it's not the old ones. You know, it's not. No, the they're not. Yeah, they're not called the same like people, are they? They got totally different names. Yeah, uh, but that looks look quite interesting. Uh, and and going on from something that we we talked about uh, last week, um, uh, there's been quite a lot of people coming out from the uh, X Men um, Apocalypse camp, defending Apocalypse. Uh, you know, you were saying obviously it does look like whatever it is from uh, from Power Rangers. Yeah. Apparently, so... there's going to be a lot of stuff done with CGI. So you know, sort of, that's just photos from the set. So let's see what they do with CGI to to make this guy look a bit. I better. hope so. Yeah, because he can it can change shape. It can you know get bigger and smaller on cue. So he has these different powers. So let's just hope that yeah. that bit where he looks it's, like Doctor Who's or whatever his name is is just for a split second. <laughs> They actually did say that it was a good point uh, when the 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 set pictures set pictures leaked of Quicksilver from uh, from the last film. Everyone was up in arms because that wasn't what Quicksilver looked like. But Quicksilver turned out to be the best part of that film. Of yeah, you know, it was a great film, but the Quicksilver scene was probably the best part. So, um, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold judgment until until I've seen it. I'm hoping uh, you know they pulled out some fantastic movies, so I'm hoping they can do something pretty cool with this as well. Well, yeah, talking about from good movies to bad movies, uh, for <laughs> us in the UK, Dead Rising Watchtower came out um, on iTunes yesterday. So I've not watched it yet, but I probably will oh, rent no, it right. if I ever find myself <laughs> alone because I, I love the whole Dead Rising franchise and I'd love to see what they do with it. And um, so I'm probably going to watch that even though it's been absolutely slated. So I like, I like was it Rob Riggle or something? He's playing Frank West. So he, I don't know if you watch Modern Family or anything, but he's like the yeah, yeah. So he's the the enemy or the nemesis estate agent in in Modern Family, but he's oh, playing yeah, 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 yeah. So he plays Frank West in this, and then he I guess he leads this Chase Carter from John Took Must Die. He leads him around this quarantine zone. I I think it's got some funny moments. Maybe you've got to be a hardcore <laughs> fan of of Dead Rising to watch it, but yeah, it's been slated as a movie, but. Gonna watch it anyway. I think. Did this get uh, any sort of release? Or like, is it going straight to iTunes? Did it get like a DVD release or uh, anything? No. Like that? Well, it's been it's been a while in the making. To be honest, it's been out in America for a while. Oh, okay. I, d- I didn't really have an official sort of cinema release. It was kind of a straight to video kind of one. Um, but oh. then it took ages for it to come to the UK, and then only recently was it actually announced for for the UK market as well. So. Yeah, you can you can buy it on Blu-ray. You can do all that now, as of yesterday. So, right, you're a fan of Dead Rising. Take this with a pinch of salt, but it will help extend that universe a little bit further. <laughs> Fair enough. I might give that a try. That's going to be off my radar, but that, like you say, if I've got two hours to kill, I might be quite entertaining. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so we've uh, definitely passed the hour, so let's wrap it all up. Uh, so, John, I just want to say a massive thank you for joining me today uh, and discussing no all the games and discussing all the things, uh, all game-related. Um, and if people want to get in contact or get in touch, how do they do that? Uh, best way to get in contact with me uh, is probably on Twitter. I'm on the I'm just at ImageDemon78. Uh, I'm also, if you fancy a game on either PSN or Xbox, if you find me there at the uh, gamer tag, just Image Demon. Nice, nice. Okay, and if you want to get in touch with me, then I'm uh, Twitter at Gaming Debugged. Um, and if you want to read my stuff, it's on GamingDebug.com. And I just wanted to say um, thank you for joining us and thank you for bearing with us. Uh, this is only the, the second official episode, so if it sounds a bit funny, if we're having a few teething problems, then we are learning each and every uh, time we do this, and so it's just going to get better and better. And so all that I think that leaves is for us to say goodbye. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, Ian. Thanks for having us, and I'll see you next week. And this has been the Gaming Sessions podcast, episode two, the... Uh... Oh, bugger, what is it? <laughs> the audio support group for gaming addicts all right thank you very much take it easy bye cheers guys bye that's it man game over man it's game over